It is June of 2024, and I really like a lot of mini PCs. They're small, low wattage, reasonably quiet, including this one here, in case you're wondering. We'll get into that later in review. But when B-Link reached out and said, do I want to review the SER8 with the AMD Ryzen 7 8845HS, I said, well, yes, I would like to test that out. Now, the too long didn't watch if you're just wondering if it supports things like XCPNG, Proxmox, or running Pop! OS, Ubuntu, Debian. I tested all those things on here, and I was shocked at how well it worked. Right out of the box, didn't have to go hunt down any drivers. Now, it ships with Windows 11 Pro, and, you know, I raced it and then reloaded Windows 11, and that was actually relatively easy as well. Windows 11 does not have all the drivers, but the B-Link website does, so I was able to grab the drivers and reload it back with Windows. Now, this device is a little bit ahead of its time because the new AMD Ryzen 7 884 5HS has the new NPU in it. But there's not a lot of software here in June of 2024 to take advantage of it. That's why I started with the date to say that this is the review now, but this will actually get better as the software comes out for the new AMD Ryzen AI enhancement chips. And I think this is going to open up a lot of local options for running higher workloads, or if Microsoft ever figures out how they want to do their recall copilot thing, is supposed to be able to take advantage of that. So we're early on the software, but hey, the hardware is available. So let's dive into this review. Starting at the front of the unit, we have our power button, a reset button, headphone jack, USB-C, and a USB standard. Then we spin around to the back where we find three more standard USB, a USB-C, HDMI display port, a Realtek two and a half gig adapter, and then our barrel connector for power and an additional headphone jack. Now the venting across the back is just the out. It's good for heat dissipation and this thing is quiet. We'll get to the thermals in a moment, but it all comes in from underneath. The unit comes apart really easy. We have just four screws to remove on the bottom and they give you this handy little pull tab. And then we find the cover underneath, nice screen that has two more screws. And then we can just slide this cover out. Now I do like that it says, please dust regularly because this is rather fine. It will do probably a decent job of keeping the dust out of the system. But of course, eventually the surface area will get covered up even though it's on the bottom and it will probably eventually hamper performance. So make sure you check that from time to time. Once inside, we have our two crucial DDR5, and we have this heatsink covering up the two MVMEs. Once you remove the two screws, the heatsink clips over. I like that it's attached. It's kind of awkward at this angle, but if you tilt it on its side, this will stay out of the way, and you can get a good look inside the system. Now, as for the system being quiet, it really didn't go over 50 decibels, even when it was being used, even when it had a workload on it. Now, when I ran a full on benchmark that really pinned the CPUs, I could get it up there just under 60 decibels, which is still pretty quiet, but that was full fan on and running for a long time to get it there. It did not seem to overheat at all. It didn't seem to have any issues, but you know, it made just a little bit of noise, but that's actually still pretty quiet. So the thermals I would say are really good on this. Now I want to do some measurements using the kilowatt right from the plug and at idle running windows, it's a little bit below 10 Watts but that ramps up pretty quickly once you load a benchmark. And once it gets up to full power, you're looking at about 93, 94 watts being pulled right from the plug. So still under 100 watts for the amount of power you have and processing, I think is pretty reasonable. Now the power adapter stayed cool even during the testing when it was at 93 watts, but it also feels really well made. It doesn't feel like the cord's just gonna rip out of it or get fatigued over time. Now the adapter itself is UL listed and provides 19 volts at 5.25 amps. Now, as I said in the beginning, and I want to reiterate again, this was sent to me from B-Link. I do get to keep it, but there is no editorial review. There is no me sending this video or them writing the script. Now, they did ask in the email, and I will comply with, if you will, that they have me point out that there's crucial memory inside of it, which I did. I would definitely tell you the brand of the memory. So that's as close to editorializing as B-Link gets on this video. It also does have a crucial MVME. I think those are important factors and I don't blame them for wanting to highlight them because a lot of the other companies cut corners and use some of the off-brand memory or maybe an off-brand MVME. And those are, well, not always as reliable or consistent reliable. Uh, we've had a couple times when buying mini PCs with you know, some of the off-brand memory that it has some flake out issues or the MVME just 
doesn't perform well at all or completely fails after a rather short period of time. So going with the brand name one, I think is a little bit better. I've actually seen people recommend just buying mini PCs bare bone and buying the memory separate as not to deal with whatever memory they may be putting in there. Now, one complaint I have from their marketing department here is dustproof. As I shown, there's a little cover here on the bottom and it is easy to clean. I like this mesh right here and the metal plate underneath there and it will help keep the dust out of the fan, but you still, just like it says, you have to clean it. The unit's been with me for roughly 30 days and I've been running different hypervisors on it. I've had no stability issues, no overheating issues. It seems to work well. I know 30 days is not a really long amount of time, but I'll uh, actually probably keep using this for a while. So I'm looking forward to when the driver updates and software updates come that allow more software to take advantage of the NPU that's in here. Now, if you're looking for a few more reviews of this, Wendell from Level 1 Techs and ETA Prime both have videos you'll find linked down below. Uh, Wendell also tested the USB-C 40 gig and external graphics card. So, hey, make sure you check out his video. And ETA Prime did some games on it. So if you're wanting to run this specifically for games, hey, you know, it did pretty well. I was actually shocked at how well it did with a few of the games. But, hey, check out their videos for more information. I, I just don't play a lot of games, so uh, not something I really did. Like and subscribe to see more content from the channel. Head over to my forums, forums.lawrencesystems.com to have a more in-depth discussion about this and other topics. And uh, I'll see you on whatever socials you find me on at lawrencesystems.com. All right, and thanks.